The Cumbria Way is a 73 mile linear hike through some of the most beautiful and contrasting landscapes that Cumbria has to offer. Join myself and Fern as we head from the historic town of Ulverston, taking in the mountains, lakes, woodlands and glacial valleys of the Lake District, ending in the equally historic city of Carlisle. Lose your socks if you don't stop ruining my audio, mate. That's it, we've started the <laughs> This is us, we've started the Cumbrian Way. Cheers, Fern. Yes. Cheers to the Cumbrian Way. <laughs> we started the hike in Ulverston, fashionably late, and after a couple of pints, we headed off to find a camp spot for the first night. Start of the Cumbrian Way. We've only just started and we've not even started. We've been fighting about. Fern's trying to actually kill me with her phone. <laughs> Rock and roll. <laughs> Our first encounter with heifers. And if you don't, you know, don't give them grief, they won't give you grief. I feel like they can sense my fear. But you don't have any fear. Oh, yeah. Do you remember? Fern's terrified of cows. <laughs> no, not really. I am a bit. Right? No. I'm not terrified quite strong. Uh, if you had to use one of them as a carpet in front of your fire, which one would it be? Brown one. Yeah, which brown one? Although, <coughs> now I've looked at it, but I don't want to. Just yeah, I can do having that. a good time acting. Sorry guys, I know it's not me, I know, but I'll be better in the future. Just stay tuned for the next one. We in Scotland do something rugged. Can you point over there? Wow. Wow, that's good. <laughs> there we are. Sunrise, morning one. That's night one. Night one's pitch to the east. I think that's Morecambe, may I believe. The lighthouse. Got a lovely sunrise there. And we're off into these mountains. And we're making up some lost time for day two. And Fern's eating things out of the ground. Here we go. There's not been any latches and locks, but this is a gate. I don't know if it's intentionally on an angle like this, but <clears throat> it's using gravity a lot here. Fuck you know. There you go. <laughs> but it's made a little stone bridge. Ideal. Are we gonna get attacked by a dog? It does, it says Cumbria Way. Okay. Oh, okay. In. Yeah, we are there. Turn yeah. on gate duty. Well done. That's good. Yeah, we're the sort of hikers that go missing on a film, <laughs> aren't we? Yeah, we like, that we're like, hey. excuse me, sir, can I come in and fill up my water bottle? He's like, yes, you can. Yeah, please, please do. It's I'm down. Waiting. It's down in the basement. <laughs> it's the only tap that works. <laughs> Okay, mate. Oh, hi, guys. Hi. Oh, no. So we've got. What are these again, Fern? Um, they're the uh, white blanket trotters. <laughs> Lads? Oh, no. Hi, Bob. You didn't have to see that one, hey, it looks. Oh, you guys. Hi. Hi, yeah. Sheep Whisperer. And these guys over here that stink a little bit are. Oh. All right, lads. It doesn't smell too bad, actually. Do you want some of that? Yeah. The 
the nettle. I love it. You may find a small patch of nettles allowed to grow on the churchyard and wonder why. You read the, now you do a sentence each. We try to keep our churchyard tidy and at the same time manage it in a way that helps wildlife. But why nettles? Well, I'll tell you, Fern. The <laughs> nettle is a native plant that sustains a wide variety of wildlife. It is food plant, okay, and sheltered home. Mm, You've missed an A out on that. No, Even I know that. It is food plant, and look, let's let's have trust. It might make sense as we go. It is food plant and sheltered home to a number of insects, including the caterpillars of the beautiful peacock, tortoiseshell, and red admiral butterfly and some moths. <laughs> uh, its stinging <laughs> spines provide a safe habitat for other insects which in turn provide food for predators like birds, ladybirds and their larvae and birds, butterflies, bullfinches, goldfinches enjoy the ripe nettle seeds. Do you think there's a church service going on? <gasps> well while we're doing this we are just to not say church and if we burn this door down there's no people in silence doing a prayer and we've just been ripping. No. We're not allowed but there is a side of should we try that? Well, where are all the people coming from as well who are dead? <laughs> what do you mean, where are they coming Well, from? it's not like a. Where, yeah. That's why it's so small, I guess. Farms, just a couple of farmers. So, what I love about getting into the lakes is the stone. When you start getting in and they use, they use all this sort of. Yeah, the the grey slip. <laughs> Look! I'm a landscaper and builder. I do this sort of stuff. You do flowers and stuff. We're the perfect mix. I don't think you can just try any old dwarf, Ernie. Huh? What is he a sheep? Is he, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, we made a terrible mistake. But, Dad, if you find this footage, I love you. Goodbye. <laughs> don't jump into it, because that could be the end of you. God, I mean, do jump in it. No. For the I'm film. Gonna, Come gonna, on. No. Okay. I want to be over that side. I should have. I should have assessed the situation first. Shuffling, shuffling. Go on then, shuffle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only filming when there's times where things could go wrong. So good. Uh, it's Wait. because I've come from the South Downs way where the paths were just so like this is a path. To this is like, I like it. You've got to make it up. I need to get my little foraging bag out. Beautiful. Well, we can have them for dinner. We're going to have them for dinner. Ah. Jerky and mushroom sandwiches for all. <laughs> there you go. Orange by Fern. Literally. He's deaf. He's definitely deaf. Guys, we found a deaf cat. <coughs> deaf cat one to deaf cat two. I don't want to, like, shock him. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God, Paul, look. He had the one brown eye, one blue eye thing that you like. No wonder he can't see. <laughs> he can see, he just can't hear. <laughs> well, what I want is a deaf and blind cat. Scaredy cat. Scaredy cat, see you later, mate. Medic! Posh coffee bags. There you go. For regular viewers, you'll have seen these before. They don't look edible, do they? If in nature you saw something like that, you'd be like, nah, mate. That's going to send me to the outer realms of me noggin, potentially death. But they are edible. Um, they lose the colour a little bit when cooked, they don't look as vibrant, but amethyst deceivers. Or pop them in the bag. So can you walk back down here, like walk through this bit of dappled light for me? Yeah, where are you? I'm here in the bright red t-shirt. Med-ish. Look at this, look. Below the yellow pull. gate road. Wait, what do I pull? The gate. <laughs> there you go. You made it sound really complicated. <laughs> there you go, look. Teamwork. <laughs> and you're wearing your yellow shoes. The yellow you shoes. You can be away. Can be away. Can be away. <laughs> there you go, guys. Two people to open one gate. And then, we kept typing. And then... Yeah. <laughs> Try my best. Me up for not paying my parking <laughs> fines. Fern's got a little bag full of mushrooms hanging off her back, like some sort of <laughs> hobbit. That's art. Look, guys, artwork. Look, 
and then it opens out and reliably informed that this here it's the old man of Coniston and that's where we're heading to the foothills of Coniston to actual Coniston where we shall get a pint and some food Instagram shit behind me let's have a look in here no she's always posing like that she didn't even know I was going to be filming <laughs> It's just a natural thing. Every time I look around, even when I don't have my camera, it's this, it's I this, no, it's this. I was looking at the sun so I could sneeze. She was actually staring into the sun <laughs> so she could sneeze. Tactics. I was really enjoying it. I was like, let's make the most of this sneeze. Were you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought you were just going like... <laughs> no. I was just really getting into the moment. Okay. Sometimes a sneeze is a very enjoyable thing. She's not wrong. She's not wrong at all. <laughs> also, I use these bits. Uh, the reality is, for you guys back home who watch it, you know the script. And there we see, see the path snaking its way through the bracken. And I've said it before, but I love these paths. They're like, the sheep keep the grass down. It's sort of like stones intermittently spaced out. It's like, if you could recreate this in your garden, you'd be onto something. And you can see it there as it snakes through and we're gonna duck down here and have a swim in this tarn. Right, I've just gazelled over there and Fern's gonna do exactly the same. Okay, I'm only filming it in case it goes wrong. <laughs> Easy, light work. There we go. There we are anyway, frolicking, frolic naked. <laughs> <laughs> and it's right there's i'm up to my knees in the mulch it feels quite weird and nice but the the water clarity is brilliant and apparently fern's just offered me out for a swimming race but i don't know cause she lives by the sea she swims every day what chance of little old me got The consequences for failing this jump are massive, because look at that. Like from there to there isn't that bad. Yeah, no, I get a good run up, you're good. Yeah, I haven't got any more straps on, is <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because just I'm thinking of like the worst. In fact, I would hate it if you fell in, because I'd have to deal with the aftermath as well. No. Okay, Fern, you've got this. <laughs> right, eventually at some point on this hike, one of these jumps is going to fail. This is not the time. You got this. I could see a bit over there or I could just walk. I mean, that's what I did, to be honest. Did you? No, I jumped it. You Come on, stop swearing. Did you, did you walk around? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. No, Fern. Uh, to be honest, that's what I did, yeah. It's easy, yeah. It's super easy. Yay! Yeah. See, that's it. That's the smarts. She's got herself the smarts there. No bravado, just smart. Just seeing if you're there. Seeing if she's doing a pose, oh, she's making a sneeze or <laughs> doing some sort of pose. Yeah. <laughs> Girl, has been a few of these come down recently as well because the pines are still quite green and what's happened is we've lost a few of them they've come down taken out this one and it, it's like a domino effect like pine trees don't have a tap root so they just their, their roots just spread across the top of the ground so they'll come out quite easy in high winds and look at that all that perfect resin and that's what's happened, look, they've all come down. <laughs> yeah, you can't be going can't into a blue whale, baby, yeah. can you, or whatever. You want to? Uh, 
mean, a handful of people have stopped by it, and we yeah, are very happy to you know, explain ourselves. Yeah, and, it's that it's situation a, where you're like, I need to know. Yeah. I can't walk off. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got three different radars at different frequencies so yeah. here, uh, a video camera. There you go. And then, like, what measurements are you getting through? Like, so, are you looking at just movement? So radar gives you measurements uh, as a function of range of uh, reflectivity, so how bright things appear. Okay. And we can also, also measure their velocity, or Doppler. Um, so if you've got moving targets, you can separate them in range and velocity, right. and that can help you discriminate between, you know, a fast-moving boat, say, and a slow-moving swimmer, or, okay. uh, cool. or a sea mammal or something. Wow. That's pretty cool. Um, pretty good office as well, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you've, you've got lucky here, haven't you? Yeah, it's, it sure beats being in the office. Yeah. Right, cool. Well, uh, good luck with the rest of it. Right, Cheers, guys. See ya. Bye. You don't need to, you need to shut up. up. Oh. Come on. What? Sorry, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to take your dad looking at yourself. <laughs> I need you to take... And then in, I while need you're you. looking in the mirror, I need to say, I am a dick. <laughs> I need you to shut up. I need you to take a hard shut up pill. <laughs> hungry and tired, we ended up in Coniston, where we found a pub, had a couple of pints and a well-earned bar meal. We had an impromptu stay at the U-Dale Inn, fueled on a delightful breakfast. We headed off to see what the day would bring. There we go. Start of day two. This is a folly. I don't know much about the folly because um, I was reading, but Fern sort of stolen the book. Can't get it back, so I'll just have to make it up. This is the folly of old Constantine. He used to use it as a hunting lodge when he used to hunt the poor and bewildered of the um, neighbouring villages. You learnt anything? Yeah, you're standing in a gothic folly custom built for foxhounds. Just the dogs. Oh, and also, look, someone's been having westerns and vines, look. Oh dear. Just a little heads up for people who are going to do this. It can get quite confusing because normally the arrows have a Cumbria way in the middle of the arrow, and then sometimes it just doesn't. And it's saying go that way and that way, but that is the way we should go. So don't expect to come on this and use the signs already there. You're going to need a map. Or at least the guidebook to do it. Well, I go back. I'll cut these back bits out on this one because it's a real video. Oh well, will I? Of course not. I did buy. I bought the guidebook, the the Cicerone guidebook. But st what I'll say is that I goofed, and then I'll also say, stay tuned for an up and coming hike on the Cambrian Wayne Island. Because that's what book I accidentally got. Uh, shout out the Cambrian Way. Um, but now we've got this. And we've just hit the Lake District proper. So you can see the mountains. It's lakey as. A lot of it is just farmland on the way in and on the way out apparently. So this is the real deal. And we're going to head towards Black Moss Pot for this evening. Through Langdale. And just see what delights await. So Fur's just said there's a latch lot. This hasn't got a lot going on. And all I'm hearing is she doesn't know a lot because <laughs> <laughs> bring her back. The simplicity of that, like how much money has he spent on that that does the same job as everything else? It's different, it's easy to use. There's a wonderful patina where people have just worn away the paint over years and years of hiking and memory. And look at the view <laughs> of the mountains and everything, it's perfect. I've leaned into it a little bit too much because Fern said she didn't like it. You latch and lock enthusiasts will appreciate that, look at it. Just in the shade of this old oak tree, beautiful views. Mm. You can tell the chanterelles by the gills go all the way down the the stalk there smell beautiful so we're gonna we're gonna take these and cook them up a trail snack i guess you can't come on a trail with forage by fern and not forage uh, and she's up there we found more than these there's more than just this one there's a few of them it's a beauty color on it 
Hi, Paul's giving me his camera because we're doing a bit of mushroom hunting as we hike. So we're hoping to find some edible species so we can cook them up for lunch. And anything we find, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how to identify them. So the first edible mushroom we found are these beautiful chanterelles. We've managed to kind of crush them all. They were kind of tucked in um, to the side of the path. So they're not, they're not the most beautiful specimens, but they're gonna taste amazing. Um, so what we wanna do when we find chanterelles is just make sure we have the right mushroom and we don't have a full chanterelle. So firstly, we're looking for a nice unevenly shaped cap. It's yellow in color. Take a look at the underside and you want to make sure, I don't know how to focus this thing, is that it? Maybe. Um, make sure that you have grooves in the underside so they're almost like wrinkles, you can't move them easily with your thumb. They're not like the loose uh, gills that you might find on a button mushroom. And then you want to have a look at the stipe and just make sure it's yellow to white. And then your final check as well is just to have a look at the inside. So cut one open and make sure it's got white flesh. So the full chanterelle is going to be a lot more orange in colour. Um, the grooves aren't really going to be there. It's going to be much more gills. So the gills are going to be much looser. You can move them around with your thumb. And then importantly as well, if you cut one of the full chanterelles open, it's going to be yellow to orange in flesh colour, it's not going to have that beautiful white colour. So we know we've got our edible chanterelles, so let's go and eat them. And that panoramic was brought to you by me stood on a log. A log full of money. Ugh. Just had a little stop there, ogling these lovely views. I'm gonna try, I don't know if we're gonna make it, but we're gonna try and get to the Wainwrights in, in, where was it? Haven't got a clue. In where we haven't got a clue <laughs> to see if we can get a drink. Get a drink, you poos, and have a good rest. Um, and then we'll see how we feel from there. I can't do my latch and lock, because I can't do it one I did. I don't deserve to be the CEO of latches and locks, or do I? Because I'm using my foot to pull it in like that. <laughs> Can't do it, Fern! <laughs> don't normally have a... Look, the <laughs> vice president of latches... Done you. it. Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> Look, we've met these guys, look. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs> there she is. There she is. There she is. And there she is. And there she is. <laughs> okay. Our work is done here. We're done. Thanks for coming. Oh, look, happy to those the midges are out. Favourite cow, favourite cow. Carpet, my carpet cow. The one at the back? No, middle. Mmm, him. Wonderful sunset. Look at this. It's a classic lock and latch. That's a bit paggered, but you'll see when I close it up. Clunk click. There's your view. Thanks for coming. And there in the distance is Fern. She was cold in the pub, so has put, she's got down trousers on and a down jacket. <laughs> I was like, we're not gonna be walking too far. The last thing she said was, Paul, I'm really hot. And now she's just walking, dressed as a sleeping bag, fit for Arctic conditions, which is hilarious. Morning on day, whatever it is. I look like shit. I had too many pints, how many pints did I have? I feel like I've got pissed.
lovely little pitch glorious place to wake up no trace left we're heading up there into Demdare Hills welcome to map time and you can see map time's been upgraded look with all these little bits and pieces not my doing but I support it wholeheartedly right let's I'm doing my best to do a good map time for you because I let you down on South Downs Way so here we go uh, we were late to start and um, we parked the camper in Ulverston and we headed off on our way up here and you can see we didn't do much we must have walked for maybe 45 minutes maybe an hour not much at all got up onto the tops and pitched our tent for the first night uh, some lovely views the lighthouse and Morecambe Bay we were treated with a wonderful sunrise on the morning of day we're calling it day two but essentially it's day one because you know that's how far we were from the start and so we set off through this field we went wrong here and we went it's a bit of a it's a tougher one to uh, to navigate than first expected so the maps were used quite a bit especially here where we followed this contour and ended up in the top corner of this field had a bit of a head scratch came back joined the path through here through this farm we stopped off at St John's Church a beautiful little church we had a little look around there carried on over this road and through this little village here it's all farmland at the at the beginning and then you hit this which is um Brufton Beck followed that on over here over these two roads we got a little bit lost around here I mean I say we I think it was mainly me who got us lost yeah that was it, it was, I was eyeballing a cat and it was on a um, there was like multiple choices in ways to go on here and the cat distracted me so I ended up, we ended up going the wrong way we went this way we've done it in that see this black line here we went this way cat confusion was here and then we ended up going this way so we missed out on this section and we went, we ended up going this way which you can do both so this was the detour we took we stopped here near these woods for a coffee and some trail snacks I made all our own trail snacks I did a did some jerky I'll leave a video link here if you want to know how to make that and put together some I think dry banana vegan chocolate and various nuts and things like that and Fern had made some nettle seed sort of energy balls which were more than welcome no, I mean all the trail snacks were welcomed along the way and off we went down here this is where we stopped in the wood and we found some what's that one she, she's drawn there we found some mushrooms some beautiful chanterelles and we'll tell you about what happened to the chanterelles later in the video There's a bit of a road section here which you could I guess take if you wanted to do a shortcut but we wanted to stick to the path as much as we could so we came round here up here and we started to get into the fells and stuff up here and uh, I believe Beacon Tarn is where we stopped off for a refreshing swim to cool down there's a picture of us swimming there altitude 856 feet sinking mud and that's us me Fern we didn't have a race in the end but I can guarantee you Fern would have won so refreshed after our, di our dip we carried on so it's just beautiful man it's the, the 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 scenery was just on point all the way through here the weather was lovely coniston water and we met these look you can see them here science look laser -lytic science guys we met these science guys who were doing some experiments by the side of the lake i was baffled i had no idea what they were on about but it all seemed pretty cool we started to get a bit tired here we, we were feeling it and we were pretty hungry uh, we made it to Coniston I got the chat on with the um, the owner and managed to get out a pretty good deal at the Udale Inn so we stayed there impromptu had a lovely breakfast and then set off again along we went past this old folly and up and round and I was I was getting a bit giddy at this point I think we both were getting a bit giddy because we both are, um, can get over excited <laughs> I mean I've got ADHD I don't know what Fern's excuse is but at the time we saw this butterfly and took a moment just to centre ourselves and the butterfly stuck around for quite a while so we, we we took a few deep breaths and carried on and along we went up here to this car park and thankfully there was a a little van selling drinks, ice creams, cakes so we got an ice cream, we got a cake, something to drink and then carried on this bit was beautiful all around this this lake and through these woods, some stunning scenery I'm doing good here, this is good isn't it, this is good map time this 
Uh, we hit this road, went along the road for a little bit, and then there's multiple choices here, and we decided to do a detour around here. We stopped off here for some trail snacks, a bit of a drink, look at the map, a bit of a rest, and then we carried on because we wanted to see this waterfall, which we did do, and actually we had a swim in it. It was wild, it was cold, it was beautiful. That was one of the highlights of the trip for me, was this waterfall and swimming in it. Um, crystal clear water. The cold water just invigorated us and helped us with our final push. Again, multiple choices here. We came this way. I'm gonna say here, right, is this is what we did. So we didn't, we didn't come back on here and join this, because we saw this track here, so we took this, and it's a nice little road actually, to Ella Water, where we stopped at the pub, and got a bar meal, a couple of pints, we met, it was a few people actually, met a, a subscriber, chatted to him for a bit, and then the parking family, who I know from Whitby and Mark, I grew up with when I was a kid, so it was a bit of a random encounter, but we met them, had a drink with them, um, they went back to their campsite, and then we carried on, Fern was dressed as a sleeping bag. We started to lose light around here, so we were looking for somewhere to kip. And we found the perfect pitch. Here. And that's where we woke up, and that's where we'll continue on from on the next video. If you're not subscribed already, please consider subscribing. Hit the bell notification if you want to be notified of the next upload. And I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.